This is their zoo. He's gorgeous. He works as the narrator, basically, in, for much of the production of the show, the story. He does. He's actually a very difficult puppet to manipulate. Um, Derek, the guy in our show, is, in, is wonderful. And this is very intricate. Uh, what's in here? This is a little baby slinky inside. It's a slinky inside yes. Zazu. It's got a little slinky neck. And this is parachute silk that's all been individually cut out and sewn on and painted. Let's show Scar here. This is the evil, uh, the evil lion, and it's it's more than a mask. It's actually electronical. It has it has some expression as it moves during the show, doesn't it? That's right. This is um, one of the more intricate pieces in the show, and all this complete unit, these servo units, are disguised under his body. And this is the finger control that he wears to manipulate the mask. Wow. On stage, it all looks like this. Simba, Simba, Simba. I'm only looking out for the well-being of my favorite nephew. Actor Larry Yondo makes it look easy, but it took time. He remembers early rehearsals with this costume. The first month and a half, I thought I'd lose my mind. And I think anyone would tell you this because, you know, it's, 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 I think it's something like 48 pounds additional weight with the batteries and the mechanic. And just trying to get the mask with the finger control in the right place, I, did, I couldn't even think about what I normally do when I act. You know what I mean? I was like, just get this off me. Get it off me so I can act the scene. As audiences in Portland will learn, Yondo and all the performers have perfected their craft. Are these people that we're watching on stage actors? Are they puppeteers? They're both, but they're hired as actors originally, and then we teach them how to become puppeteers. And how easy is that for them? It's very difficult. There's more work behind the curtain. The set for The Lion King is huge, but where does it all go backstage? <laughs> Look at the stars. The great kings of the past look down on us from those stars. Wait, wait, wait. There's no mountain too great. Hear these words and paint, paint. Welcome back. We're behind the scenes, The Lion King in Chicago. And right now we have the head carpenter for the show, Mike Nye. Mike, this is a huge production. Can you give me an idea how many people you have working behind the scenes? And also, how much it takes to get this from Chicago to Portland? <laughs> Our crew alone is about 26 people. We also employ a number of local crew. So and several dozen people are back here working on things. Yeah, it's, it's, it's probably about 40 to 50 people mm -hmm. overall. And when you load up this show, because you're taking it from here to Portland, right. what's it take? A lot, <laughs> a lot, uh, a lot of hours and a lot of people. Uh, generally, there's over a hundred people involved mm -hmm. in in loading this show. And you said twenty trucks, uh, semi trucks. Twenty, twenty one. Twenty one. Twenty one tractor trailers. Once we arrive in Portland, we'll start on a Wednesday morning, and we will have an audience on uh, Friday night. That quick? Yeah. Amazing. You guys are good. So, Mike, you have a huge production here with more than fifty cast members and puppets and masks and and, and big, huge costumes, but here on the floor we don't see any of that where do you keep it and how do you keep it so people can get to it when they need it yeah the majority of the uh, scenery puppets anything that is obviously too large to go through a doorway like that lives on stage but uh we fly everything so fly as in yeah. store above our heads yeah. the elephant graveyard i can see over my head there's a big elephant over there there's several gazelles on a, on a mechanism up there and the wildebeests are right. stored a, 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 across the uh, the back on some racks um that's not in immediate uh, proximity for somebody to get to they you have ways to get them up and down and, yeah. and get them out of the way yeah it's kind of like a, a pit crew in some ways it's like a pit crew from a car race exactly run over pull everything out get it set get it on stage same thing when it comes off that's during the performance. Backstage is a busy place between shows during the daytime. The maintenance crew is always fixing and repainting and making sure the set is set for the next show. And the Lion King production employs several full-time sewers who repair all the costumes and a laundry person running loads all day to keep them all clean. Jillian Kadish is the wardrobe supervisor. 
basically every actor in this quick change area that we call the bunker has uh, a divided space in a gondola and uh, each space is marked with a person's name and it's usually three to a gondola so each one of the actors will come up here and get changed into their various costumes we have sixteen dressers who um, assist the actors in getting into the clothes. Sixteen people who are here Six. taken off exactly. and putting on. Exactly, so it's a very tight space and there's as much choreography backstage as there is on stage now, if I'm an actor or an actress in the show, this is my or this is my section. And how many of these changes will I mean during during one part of the show, that actor will be a lioness, and then later will be a hyena, and it just continually changing. Correct. Back and forth, they right? have, I would say, the ensemble on the whole have at least ten changes throughout the night. They'll start off in their opening number, which is typically an animal because of the circle of life, and then they get into their next costume, and it just carries on. They're backwards and forwards in their costumes all night until the end of the show. So sometimes we might move like we're animals, and then sometimes we might talk like we're humans. Next, behind the curtain, meet the stars of the show and find out what they take away from this story. Wallace Smith plays the maturing Simba in the Lion King's touring cast that comes to Portland this week. The young actor told me he grew up in a single-parent family, and in that way, he relates to his character on stage. And I think for Simba, because he has his father and then his father snatched away from him, I think that's about the equivalent of growing up. He does grow up without that guidance, without that leadership. And I think that that's really what makes him asymmetrical. It makes him very, you know, all over the place. He's just scattered. He doesn't know where to go. He doesn't know what to call home. In the story, Simba does go home, but only after the urging of the young lioness, Nala, played by Terea Campbell. Although not king of the pride, she thinks her character may be the strongest of all. She could just stand by and watch the land be destroyed and watch, you know, everything that she's known all her life crumble before her eyes. But she steps up to the plate. She knows it's not right. She knows that she has a chance to make things better, and she does. I have no choice. I will find my way. You may recognize Torea. She performed with the Oregon Symphony in the holiday show just last December. And we've heard from Larry Yondo a few times in our half hour. He's the bad guy in The Lion King, the evil Uncle Scar, jealous of his brother, the king, and of Simba, the heir to the throne. It's got to be a heck of a lot of fun to play the evil part it in, is. in any show, but this any one especially. Show. Yeah, villains are good. They're calm. Villains are good. I mean, they're, and especially good villains, which I think always have a sense of irony. And, and humor about that. Hey, Uncle Scar, when I'm king, what did that make you? A monkey's uncle. <laughs> That's why it's number one fun to play and why so many people like to do the villains. Mm -hmm. And God knows I love it. And I, for some reason, I get them a lot. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Rufus Bonds plays Mufasa, Simba's father. He plans a trip to the Washington Park Rose Garden during the show's run here in Portland. He's been there on other trips to the Rose City. And he's been in several productions of The Lion King. To him, it's about... About taking care of the family, about loving one another, and about passing on history. And I think to me, that's what the story represents. And to me, I think people get that. So they walk away with something triggered inside of themselves about their fathers, about their family, about what they should do or should not do. So, whenever you feel alone, just remember that those kings will always be there to guide you. When we come back, how you and your family can enjoy The Lion King when it starts its run in Portland this week. So the Lion King's tour here in Chicago is almost done. It begins in Portland September 9th at the Keller Auditorium. For tickets, visit Ticketmaster, one of their outlets, or Ticketmaster.com. 
or you can just call 503-790-ARTS. And as they say in the show, Hakuna Matata. I'm Carl Click. I hope you have no worries. Good night.